Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, and I'm talking about uh, Michael Joseph's Safaricom system in Africa where you can transfer minutes of cell time around as currency. So we might transfer hours around in, the, in our world, but they're transferring minutes, and it's working. Great news. I'm going to put the banks out of business. So this is from nextbillion.net uh, newsroom, July 14th. I read this, Mutual Benefits of Profits from Poverty, BBC News World Edition, posted on July 14th. Next time you take a taxi in Nairobi, Kenya, you might not need cash to pay the fare. Instead, you text message the fare's value in surplus mobile phone minutes to your cabbie using Safaricom's prepaid airtime cards. Gee, I wonder if we could do that in Canada and the U.S. too. The model is similar to smart communications, as first reported in a digital dividend What Works case study last summer. It targets low-income entrepreneurs and customers who can use surplus minutes as an electronic currency of sorts, a currency more secure and traceable than cash, and pro an electronic version of Berkshire's or Toronto Dollars. BBC reports. So I went and found the BBC report. Mutual Benefits of po Profits from Poverty from Monday, July the 4th, 2005. Wow. Wow. So, uh, what's it say now? Da, da, da. By Peter Day, presenter, BBC Radio. And it goes on to say, uh, even in poverty-stricken Africa, big things are happening. The lives of the poor are also being transformed by mobile phones. Shop teachers, such as Mr. C.S. Malisi are text messaging their suppliers. Hours of travel and the sending of letters or messages are replaced by a phone call. Farmers are getting accurate information about the market price of their crops as they harvest them. Phone card currency. But it is bigger than just communication. Safaricom is Kenya's largest mobile phone company and almost the country's biggest company, more than half owned by the government. Safaricom has more than 2 million users, and it is run by a thoughtful South African engineer called Michael Joseph. Just the other day, he unveiled a new service allowing Safaricom subscribers to buy prepaid phone cards, which then enable them to transfer any selected amount of surplus minutes to other subscribers using text messaging. Just like my Yahoo groups where I say I owe you so many hours of labor, they're moving around minutes in the same way. You can pay a supplier with it or even create a little bank of phone call credits to sell to others. What Michael Joseph has actually done is to create a new currency, a cyber currency that can be sent anywhere in the country at the press of a button without needing a bank account or incurring high bank charges or interest. You see what's happening, the mobile phone is multiplying its revolutionary impact on the lives of the poor, giving them facilities once available only to the rich. Mutual advantage. The sudden creation of a new kind of global mass market of people, each with tiny buying power, but hundreds of millions of them, this is the subject of a provocative recent book from the revered Indian-born management guru, Professor C.K. Prahalad of the University of Michigan. Too bad he couldn't get it started in the States, eh? Professor Prahalad thoroughly approves of this new mobile phone company move in Kenya. What we're seeing is another example of Professor Adam Smith's remarkable invisible hand of capitalism at work. The naked self-interest that a phone company is reaching out to shake hands with the naked self-improvement of people hitherto stuck in poverty to their mutual advantage. What on earth will happen next? Well, maybe Canada and the U.S. will start using mobile phone uh, minutes instead of having no money at all. Hey, if the Africans can do it, maybe we can wise up too. So, and at some point, I hope they're going to switch and start using some negative credits too. Why should they transfer only positives when they could be also transferring negatives? So, and finally, a last story from the National AE, United Arab Republic, I believe. Uh, from June the 4th of this year, House of Cards, it's called, inside Etisalat's Treasure Vault. 
And uh, it says, somewhere in Ajman, amid a sea of nondescript low-rise villas, sits the Ebtikar Card Systems Factory, a drab building surrounded by a three-meter-high concrete perimeter fence topped by barbed wire and security cameras. This is basically the bank of Etalisat. Etisalat, a staffer said as we were buzzed through the first layer of security. It's more like our Fort Knox, another chimed in. The factory, one of Ajman's largest employers, makes every Etisalat recharge card sold in the Emirates, and it makes a lot of them. 420 million this year, the company hopes. Because a recharge card is worth exactly what its face value says, like a stamp, and because mobile talk time is always in demand, like stamps, printing them is a lot like printing money, like stamps. Hence the fencing, the cameras, and the biometric security systems on the doors. The cards are made by machines with Teutonic sounding names like Mobar and Atlantic Zyder. Every hour, more than 20,000 cards are stamped out, then wrapped in clear plastic by the Wrapmaster 100, which does what its name implies and does it well. Then they're boxed and sent to the vault. Inside the vault are hundreds of millions of dirhams of future Etis Salat revenue. A single box of DH-100 cards is worth DH-120,000. And thousands of the shoebox-sized cartons are stacked in piles that reach from the ceiling. It is worth noting, before anybody starts planning um, Ajman's robbery of the century, that every box of cards is traceable, and Etisalat can easily deactivate the recharge numbers associated with the stolen box. The real risk, said Ebtikar Chief Executive David Uget, is persistent low-level theft. People steadily stealing in quantities that are small enough to remain under the radar. This is the only leakage that is possible, he says, and all our security is built to target that. Indeed, as the mobile phone increasingly becomes a truly universal possession, more than half the world's population already owns one, wow, recharge credit is emerging as an alternative currency. Particularly in developing countries where the banking system has little interest in serving most of the population. Only the rich guys who can deposit, right? Nokia's in-house anthropologist, Jan Chipchase, often mentions Uganda's Sente system, under which city dwellers use mobile networks to send money home to their families in the countryside. The sender buys a recharge card, but instead of loading it to his phone, he calls the mobile phone kiosk in his village, then reads out the recharge code. The kiosk owner resells the credit and gives the money in cash to the recipient. The Sente system emerged spontaneously, but mobile networks are slowly launching official versions. In some countries, you can send money to a friend via a text message. Must be Safaricom in Kenya. The friend uses a code to withdraw the cash from an ATM. This month, Vodafone, which bills more than 300 million customers, announced that it will soon open its global billing system to outside users. Hey, California, maybe you ought to join up. That means a website in Canada will be able to bill a customer in India through their Vodafone account. In other words, we're putting the banks out of business. In industry circles, mobile banking is tipped to be the next big thing. Yes, sir, putting the banks out of business. And that's it. Electronic terminals are eating away, but that is what's going on with e with cell minute money around the world. And why can't we do it too? Put the banks on a business.